DMV Hoop Session, highlighting the best high school basketball in the DMV. Powered by the Scholar Athlete Sports Network, SASN.TV. Noah Schuber here with SASN TV, and we are happy and proud to welcome on Alfonso Who's Mizzou Duckett, the owner and founder of the highly successful Who's Mizzou YouTube channel. Alfonso, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having me. It's my pleasure. Now, first off, I want to ask, you know, you've created such a platform for yourself with how much you've covered DC sports and how well known your YouTube channel is and all your various social media. So what has it been like to see this grow and see the impact that you've had on the DC sports and DC community as a whole? Um, it's, it's, it's been a blessing because I didn't know what I was doing would catch the attention of so many people. And, you know, it's just a good thing. You know, at the end of the day, I'm doing a good deed for my city by just providing exposure. Yeah, it's great to see how your platform has expanded and the impact that you've made on the DC community and sports community as a whole. And I want to start off by asking, before we get into specific teams or specific players, what have you been noticing about the DC basketball season as you're getting towards kind of the early February, towards the end of the season, towards tournament time? I've been noticing what me uh, particular don't underestimate anyone. The teams that I thought that wasn't going to really make a lot of noise this year are making noise this year. So it's just like, you know, got to show up and play no matter what the media say or the predictions say, you still got to show up and play. And I will say some teams that I, you know, didn't think too much of this year. They showing me something, and I respect that. And I think that's a perfect segue into our next question of who are those teams that you've been noticing this year that people really didn't think much of going into the season, but have stepped up and really shown something and have proven their worth in a highly contested D.C. basketball crowd. And we sticking in D.C. IAA, correct? Yes, sir. I'm going to say the first thing I'm going to start off by saying that really impressed me this year is the Coolish Colts. And that's only because I didn't think they had a front court to complement their elite back court. I trust their guards. I love their guards. I just didn't believe in Coolidge front court. But they slowly progress, and Coolidge is the number two team in the DCIAA. Banneker Bulldogs is another DCIAA team that stood out to me and the most improved DCIAA team is the Cadoza Clerks like they really turned it around got it going I had them as the second best team but Coolidge showed me that they the second best but Cadoza Coolidge and Banneker Bulldogs and I can't forget school without walls they might not make the playoffs but they had an impressive season they it's eight teams go they gonna be number nine if anything so, School Without Walls, Coolidge, Banneker, Cadoza. Now, staying kind of on the underdog track, getting away from the teams as a whole, are there any players that you think had something to prove or really stepped up this season and showed what they had and were able to lead their team to prosperity and get wins and be successful and people thought they really weren't going to be that successful, as successful as they were? Um, I'm going to say one player that really stood out to me. I knew about this player, but he really stood out to me because he finally got the green light this year for his team, and that's DeMonte Niclos, class of 2025, McKinley Tech High School. Like Last year, he was like a support role guy. This year, he is their guy. If he don't play, they don't win type of feel. He really impressed me as like that lead guard. He could play that lead guard role. Quentin Cooper, you know, University of Buffalo commit, he impressed me. Marcus Dunbar Jr., a freshman, came out of nowhere. I don't, never heard of him until I started going to McKinley Tech games. Freshman for McKinley Tech, doing good. Makai Gray, freshman for Coolidge, doing good. Um, it's, it's a lot of other players I could name, but DeMonte Nicole's really impressed me. Now, of the teams this season where they might not reach the playoffs, they might not get to the final round of the championship game, but 
They have really stepped up this season. What teams have you noticed that have been taking that next step where maybe not this season they will bring home hardware, but next season they very much could and are dangerous in the next one or two years? Coolish Colts. If they get a front court, I like them in the States. If they got a front court that they could feed the ball to and they could go get some production from the front court, more than eight points, I like Coolidge. They have some of the top guards in the area. I just don't believe in their front court. You put some big men with that, Coolidge won't be a problem, a major problem. Now, moving away from the public school scene, I want to talk more about the private schools. And we've seen a lot of back and forth with the private schools where there hasn't really been that one team, it seems, who has really pulled away. So of the private schools who have found success and have been somewhat dominant this season, who have been your favorites to watch and the teams that you really think proved a lot and stepped up this year? I'm going to say I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say two private schools. I'm going to say St. Albans out of the IAC conference and Murray out of the MAC conference. And I'm going to say Murray because when I spoke to some of their players early in the season, they said in their conference they were supposed to be ranked fifth to finish and they felt as though they was disrespected with that ranking and they actually proved that because they have an impressive season this year and then St. Albans on the other hand they have an impressive season as well this year they got one player uh, Grant Pope he doing, they, doing this thing and Jalen Wills and they have another guy I don't know the other guy name, but St. Albans caught my attention and Murray I respect the fact that they didn't like how they was ranked in preseason and they actually made a statement about that. So those are two private schools that really, you know, stood out to me. The other private schools, I already look at them like I already put them here. So, you know, they could only beat nationally ranked teams to really like catch my attention, you know, but out of the private schools, Murray and St. Albans most definitely. I got a shout out. You, do you want to know something about the charter schools? Go for it. I got to shout out Friendship Tech Prep. Friendship Tech Prep. I got to shout them out. I got to shout out Idea. Um, I don't know if this is a charter school, but Wash the International. I'm not really hip to them. I don't know if that's a charter school or not, but they have been a pretty impressive year. I don't know about their conference. I don't know what's up with their conference or if it's tough or not, but they have a good year. But Friendship Tech Prep. I think they could make some noise in the state's playoffs this year. And finally, before we let you go, if you had to predict your final two for the DCIAA and for the charter school and for the private schools, who are you picking to face off in the championship games or make the final four? Either way, what teams do you think are going to be coming out on top at the end of this season? Number one, Jackson Reed. Unanimous, unanimously decision. However you say it, unanimously decision, Jackson Reed. Two, you said regardless of the seed. And, you know, I like my Roosevelt boys. I like my Roosevelt boys. But Rose, I like Rose. I'm with Rose. And then when it comes to the private school scene, what are you seeing out there? Uh, Private school, I think the Sidwell friends could win the Mac. Um... IAC, I don't know if St. Albans could win that. Um, maybe Bullis or Georgetown Prep win that. Charter school in one division, I would say Friendship Tech Prep. In the other, in the other division, I would have to say Idea or Kip Legacy. I could see Kip Legacy, you know, sneaking up, you know, shocking some people. That's, that's like the second division in the Charter League. Well, it's been a blast having you around. And who is Mizzou? I want to thank you so much for your time. Alfonso, who is Mizzou Duckett? Joining Noah Schubert for SASN TV. And thank you so much for your time. And best of luck with your channel down the stretch. Thank you so much for your time. Hey, thank you. One more time before we go, man. It's the network. Hey, and put some respect on Friendship Tech Prep name. Friendship Tech Prep. But it's the network. Thank you, Noah. Appreciate you. It's my pleasure. DMV Hoop Session, highlighting the best high school basketball in the DMV. Powered by the Scholar Athlete Sports Network, SASN.TV.